Results from Tucson's election earlier this month proved to be a mixed bag. While Democrats swept their races, the Sanctuary City initiative backed by Pima County Democrats failed overwhelmingly. Not long after the ballots were tallied, Pima County Republican Party leadership raised concerns about voter suppression. This week, we followed up with these topics with the party chairs, Allison Jones and David Eppeheimer. The two parties came down on opposite sides on Prop 205, the Sanctuary City Initiative. Uh, David, it, it went down strong. Mm -hmm. Were you surprised how strong it went down? Well, I think there was a, a bit of a surprise there that it was that strong. I mean, I, I had been saying leading up to the election day that I thought it would be close. Uh, uh, you know, there were there were lots of competing factors uh, in in terms of various positions for and against, different constituencies for and against. Uh, so you had competing dynamics, uh, and uh, I thought it would it would be a, a bit closer. And obviously, I was happy with the margin of of defeat. Uh, to me, it showed that uh, Tucson voters um, uh, really understood that issue. Uh, understood, uh, got past the rhetoric, uh, and really understood what it would have meant to Tucson in terms of uh, adverse uh, conditions for future growth, and they voted against it. Allison, lots of attention on Prop 205, mostly against it from the governor's office and, and even further outside Tucson. Was it a winnable uh, proposition? You know, I was never really comfortable predicting how 205 would go. I know my executive committee voted to support it. It did turn out to be a very complex question. Most people are not legal scholars. Most voters are not legal scholars. And there were opinions on both sides from experts that it would either not withstand a challenge or that it would. And because most voters aren't legal scholars, uh, I believe what happened is they decided to stick with the status quo because that's what they know. We do have a plan B as Democrats, and it is to take the state legislature in 2020 and overturn SB 1070. David, you, following the election, followed a complaint with the U.S. Department of Justice alleging that postal workers weren't delivering some city of Tucson Republican ballots. What? proof do you have on that? Well, I didn't allege that. What I said was that there was a possibility of that, that the disclosure of party registration, it was, it was done via putting party registration on the affidavit envelope, which was then inserted in a mail-out envelope uh, that had a window in it, uh, a cut window, uh, that would then reveal party registration through that, that mail-out uh, envelope. And, and what I did prior uh, to the election, uh, actually quite in advance of the election, uh, was state that this opened up a series of problems that could happen. Uh, I am not alleging and hadn't alleged that that happened. There was some circle, circumstantial evidence on election day, though, that indicated it might have happened, and it was on the east side where the Republicans are. Uh, and at the voting location at Udall Center. Uh, there were so many people that swamped that center uh, having not received their ballots uh, and asking for replacement ballots. So that uh, creates, uh, I think, uh, some speculation. And actually, the U.S. Postal Service is inter interested in that claim. I, uh, have been, I'm working with their office out of Denver and they're going to look into, into that and see if there's any basis for concern. Allison, let me turn to you on this. Any concerns of voter suppression this way from the Democratic side? Well, we're, we are always in favor of a, an electoral system with integrity and, and everything that goes along with that. So although we do not think that there was anything nefarious that actually happened, David's pointing out possibilities. From that standpoint, if, if Roger Randolph is willing to look at the current way that ballots are being put in the mail and delivered, we would be happy to, to uh, have him consider any changes that would add to the integrity of the system. Because also, as David pointed out, if there was something bad going on, it could have benefited either party. Absolutely. So, uh, you know, 
let's look at it. Let's move forward to 2020. We, we nibbled on the edges of 2020 a few minutes ago. Let's move forward to that. One of the things we heard in the city elections from the Democratic candidates is they were all talking about climate change. Is this something that we're going to hear more of moving forward into the 2020 cycle, do you think, from Democrats at least? I believe it is for a few reasons. One, you know, our Department of Defense has labeled climate change as one of the primary security threats facing this nation. And the other thing is, younger folks have taken on this issue, and there are going to be four million people turning 18 by Election Day 2020. And they vote, and this is their issue. We will be hearing more about climate change. Uh, I think, and we think, that it's ludicrous, actually just ludicrous, uh, that the number one issue for a mayor in a medium-sized uh, American uh, city should be climate change. We need jobs in this community. We need new employers in this community. Uh, you know, the infrastructure of Tucson and Pima County is falling apart. It's unsafe in many, many parts of town, uh, and that has now bled into the east side, which has always been the safest part of, of Tucson. That's the kind of thing that our new mayor should be looking at, and not climate change. Allison. I would say Mayor Romero has it right, because there is a nexus between the economy and climate change. Water supply is another. Would businesses come here if they don't think they have water? Um, we need to be a place where people want to be in well, order to attract business. Let's talk about water. Uh, Mayor Romero has, uh, Mayor-elect Romero has said she wants to plant a million trees. Where are you going to get the water? Uh, it's, it's an absolutely ludicrous statement and a ludicrous plan. Planting trees, native trees, um, they don't require a lot of water and they do uh, cause cooling, which reduces people's energy bills, which reduces, uses less water. There's an excess with water and energy. I think we've now officially begun the 2020 election. <laughs> we've, we, we've turned the page on 19. We're on to 2020. Thank you, both of you, for sitting down with us. It's a pleasure you, being here.